as we drop the gate for the first time here in Daytona. And one rider down right out of the gate. On the inside, hey, welcome back to racing, Jeremy Martin. It was the 75 of Marshall Welton who was down. But Jeremy Martin missed the last round with injury. He's back and he's up front. Yeah, this track's going to be completely different for these guys than it was all day. And as you can see, Mother Nature has been playing a huge part in this track if it wasn't hard enough, Ricky. Yeah, no doubt, because, I mean, they, they are not cooperating, to say the least. And this track is going to get extremely ruddy all night long. This is probably the best the track's going to be here for the main show. I love it. Look at Martin out there making it happen. The line down to the inside, a little split in these jumps here. You take a look at the track as they jump through this rhythm section right here. You see how smooth it is. Just take note because in about five laps from now, there are going to be ruts all across the bases of those jumps. These guys are going to have their work cut out for them tonight. Like McAdoo did take second, and here comes Deegan now. The Yamahas are white tonight, running the retro look on those machines. He is up to four. You can see, James, some of these guys going going through the pack right here. The track's still a little slippery. It looks like they're not leaning the bike over very much, getting into the corner because the lines aren't established quite yet. Uh, the dismount was nice, but because he was able to backside that triple, it really absorbed the blow. Oh, and Jeremy Martin went down right in front of him. Yeah, that's another part of the track. You're watching these guys, and it's like both ends um, of the front end and rear end are pushing, and Jeremy comes off that single, basically loses both the front end and the rear, and he was down. I wonder if he was trying to initiate. Let's hear, we got a replay. I wonder if he initiates the inside to go to the inside. Probably, yeah, starts to lean the bike over a little to get to that inside. He probably sensed, right, that Hayden was there to block him, you reckon? Well, he saw what happened last weekend with Austin Forkner. He got to close that inside down, so. Keep one thing in mind about Hayden Deegan is, he came, remember, he came in to, the, the, to this season injured and uh, not 100%, and it was questionable for Detroit. So I feel as he gains confidence and keeps getting these races under his belt, He's going to continue to get better and better. So keep that in mind. Hard to believe someone won last week has more room to grow, but he certainly does. Same thing with McAdoo. He's been banged up as well. Can't tell, though, when you watch these heat races, because for the third time in three heats this year, McAdoo is the winner. Great way to start it here at Daytona. And that's the unique experience getting up against the fans here at the fence line. This place is packed. Here we go. 250 heat two. Revs are up. Gates down. Looks like that right there. Yeah, Benick thought he had the whole shot, but sneaking around Cody Shock at the number 69 has been great all season. Right there in the point standings, but Anstey down the right side of the 37 takes control second. That was a quick pass by Binnick. He was able to get a good drive coming out of that single and then doubled up on top of that little tabletop double, if you will, and uh, man, into the lead. Well, and for Max Anstey, he's probably one of the only riders in the field that was cheering for the rainfall that we had earlier. Probably wants to see more. If you look at his historical reserves, results in the mud, he absolutely excels. So watch for him. If the conditions get worse, he will only get better. James, when you're watching Anstey, do you feel like he's pushing the limits right now? A couple slip-ups. He almost went down on that long rhythm lane after the start. Yeah, I just think the track itself is it's just hard to ride. I mean, if whatever you feel comfortable with, I think Max is probably, he's riding really good, but as you saw what happened to Jeremy Martin and what almost happened to Daxton, it, it's pretty hard to ride out there. It's just so slippery. Battle here is between Shock, who you saw had the good start on that blue and white, the muck off Club of, Club of X, Yamaha, and Seth Hamaker, who's also been very fast this year, but was also involved in that first turn crash earlier in the year. This is a battle for fourth right now. Shock. Great. Anstey had an off track excursion here, so let's check the gap between he and Benick. Well, he's been turning it loose in the whoops, James. We talk about it. Uh, you talked about uh, it being slippery and how those whoops are made of clay. Yeah, and I think with Max, he's doing the right thing as far as having that speed, but that is the risk. Like once that bike and on this type of track, once it starts going sideways, you're holding on. You might end up in Disney World, but Max did a good job at holding on and keeping that lead. Hamaker has made the move on shock. Watch this line from Cody. 
Watch, watch the difference in riding styles between the number 16 of Tom Bial and number 59 of Daxton Bennett. Oh, Bennett playing game slowing up to not let Bial get up the inside. But watch how Bial is much more calculated, a bit more precise than Bennett. And then, of course, as soon as I say that, James, it never fails. Yeah, that's just the track. Oh, Bennett went down. Came well, off of that on-off. See, he was calculating. He knew that was going to happen. That's so right. That's a good play. Well, yeah. well played, Tom Biel. Yeah. But if you notice, a lot of these guys, when they're coming up on these big jumps, um, they, they're coming up short. Will. What a great story, by the way, it is for Max Anstey. He was gone. He was yeah. back in Europe for a good eight, ten years and had never really done much in Supercross. Only raced in one season back when he was a teenager. So no one really knew exactly what he could do when he came back here. Well, third in the points last season, leading the points this season, and wins, believe it or not, his first ever 250 Supercross heat race. Things just keep rolling. So we're getting ready for our first 450 heat race of the night. Rocks it up the inside. Barsha around the outside. Oh, Barsha almost lost it, and that allows Roxon to secure the lead. Yeah, you say you were waiting for Justin to get out of his shell. Well, here it is. So, but this is Ken Roxon after winning a couple weekends ago, had a little off weekend. This is what he does best, Rick. You let this guy up front, he might be night-night time. Well, and he has been riding uh, well all season long. And you think about at the beginning of the season, he got off to a rocky start at the uh, season opener in Anaheim. So, like, we, I wouldn't say no one forgot about him, but he just wasn't making waves. But this guy can ride, and you just have to wonder, man, maybe he's tired of, we don't, we haven't really talked about him much about being a champ. Oh, no! What happened there? Well. I'll tell you what happened. He was putting too much trust in the dirt, and the sand gave away when you think, James, just pushed yeah. out. I mean, we've been seeing that all night from the 250 class. These guys, they start losing on the front end. They seem to lose both ends, and that's how the track has been. And I don't know if it has a hard base to it, but yeah, you can see him going, and that's, that's tough for Kenny. Earlier, we were saying the momentum, and Kenny has a lot more momentum than Justin, and you can just see him once he gets, and then he decides to jump this yeah, well, I don't even know what to call it. Well, to what you're saying, he's got the momentum going. You were saying how important it was going to be, and you saw he was just, he had so much momentum there, and the bike just starts going, going, going. Oh, man. Going right now is Sexton, who's made the move on Barsha. So quickly, what? Roxton was able to pass Sexton, but Sexton is sticking right with him. Get to the back of the bike. Sexton going to try the outside. Lose the front end. Goes down. Yeah, you can see that coming. What he was trying to do was slingshot, use that outside and use it again and probably try to pass Kenny in that split lane because Kenny was going to go inside, inside. It was going to be hard, but good ride by Kenny. Absolutely. He fell down in this spot on the first lap, came all the way back and wins the heat. Watch for that, RC, as we watch. Second 450 heat race. Jason Anderson on the 21, Tomac up the inside, and Eli Tomac's gonna have the lead. Love watching those guys fight to get the power to the ground coming out of that first corner, James. Yeah, both of them, and both Yamaha guys got him out there. Looks like Jason Anderson's trying to make his way up, but yeah, Eli just got that lead. He probably was super happy and started sliding around, but good to see uh, Justin Cooper out front. This is his first lead of the year, isn't it? Cooper there, then it's Anderson. Oh, almost came together with Dylan Ferrandez. Ferrandez up the inside on that red Phoenix Racing Honda. Catch him really quick, and then it seems like they just get stuck there, yeah. and that's that uncertainty about the guy around him. Tomac putting in a charge on the leader, Justin Cooper, and he's going to have the inside here, and Tomac to the lead. Yeah, Justin let him go through. He could have closed that inside line off, so yeah, probably good move. He raised, maybe made him in, he wouldn't, but... Good pass by Eli, and here comes Jet Lawrence. Cooper was going to move over like Roxon did, and Jet's go. got the line up the inside. He has passed both Yamaha riders, and the series leader is into the race lead. Unbelievable, this battle here. That's what everyone at Daytona wanted to see. This year's series leader and the all-time winner at this track. This is it. Come from a high win over Tomac. Jet Lawrence takes heat number two. Big performance right there for throwing away the win. Last weekend, you make points and money if you make the main. You don't if you don't. So it's as simple as that. Got to be in the top four in the 250 last chance qualifier.
And the 75, Marshall Welton, who is down off the start in his heat, leads early. But the challenge coming on strong, and you this rhythm lane would be tough. I just learned something here on this last chance qualifiers. If you get in too hot into that corner coming under the tunnel, you fade out, and so many people sneak back the inside. That might not be the play in the main events. Yeah, Hardy will take you for a ride, no doubt about it. So Welton settling in for second. Blackmer in the lead. One lap down. But it's just getting started here in the LCQ. This race, most of them start out wild, usually builds toward a crescendo in these last chance qualifiers. I think these guys, it's going to be hard for them because if, even if you're faster than the guy in front, like the way how difficult this track is, it's just going to be hard to... Oh, no! Oh, he yes, stalled no, it! Get it going. Carroll in second place gave up one position. Blackbird, who crashed a lap ago, is right there with him. And then another rider down, and this is what you start to see. That's Jack Rogers on the 351. And like I said, it builds your crescendo. Things get wild late in the last chance qualifier. This is the final spot. This is what I like to see right here. This is brewing up to be nice, like you were talking about. Why, why can't, it's mm -hmm. like, man, come on. Oh, oh no, so Shelly off the track. Lucercio into the final transfer spot. Now, Shelly's got to be careful to not gain ground while he's off the side of the racetrack or he will be penalized. Ooh, that's going to be close. Oh, and then Lucercio says, what'd you hey. say, James? Got to oh. ride where the other guy, oh, Look, no. He looked, he looked back. And Marsh has been all over, even spent a couple of years racing in Europe, came back, had a good ride with the HEP Suzuki folks for a bit. Now on the Yamaha and riding it very well and into the main with a last chance qualifier win. There is Kessler in second, Carroll looking for third, and Lorenzo Lucercio out of South America going to bring the Wildcat Racing Gas Gas entry in with the final transfer spot in fourth. We're ready to add four more. 450 last chance qualifier is off. Kyle Chisholm with the lead and goes way wide. Yeah, to your point, Ricky, um, he went really wide. And, uh, but the main thing was him. He had to get out front, and, and Chiz is really good in these heat races. I mean, these uh, LCQs. Wow, these guys are struggling, just trying to get through this thing. And yeah. that allowed Freddie Norton to take the lead of the 22. You just have to imagine it's hard. You know, you're coming through, you make that right-hand corner after the tunnel, and you're trying to get speed going through that rhythm lane, and there's ruts all over the place again, and this, uh, this dirt really heavy and sticky. Chisholm has not put the Twisted T Suzuki in the main, so better here, running second and chasing Norton. Hand is third. Grant Harlan, who just returned to racing last week after injury, is fourth. And you see, when I say this guy's good at making mains, you can see the stat to prove it. Chisholm, 161 career starts, moving up the all-time leaderboard for starts in this sport. I finally pulled that pass off, but they're both going to the main anyway. And then more mistakes. This is tough. Yeah, no, it's very tough. I mean, you can see them. They're struggling even just going down the, the straight line and the straightaway with no jump. So just shows how difficult that track is as Chiz trying to go for the Oh, w. we had a battle right to the line. Norin, I think, is going to get it over Chisholm. It's his third LCQ win. Short wins the battle with hand, but more importantly, they're both in. Grant Harlan misses by one spot, but now it's Daytona and some very difficult conditions. We're ready to go racing. McAdoo, a good start. Can he hold it on the inside? No, Deegan's gonna knife underneath. Can he hold it? McAdoo to the lead. Cameron McAdoo, great start. And he was one of the only riders, uh, him and Tom Bial, to not take a, a parade lap. So it paid off for him, but great start by him and Hayden. And looks like uh, Seth Hemmaker in that third position. Well, that was a, a great pass up the inside or to take the lead by Cameron McAdoo. Remember we talked about when they go, to the, uh, go through that tunnel, seems like they fade to the outside. So if you're able to sneak up, through that inside, make the move. Man, that was, that was a good start. There's that inside, James, that you like, but man, McAdoo going to the outside, trying to get a run through the whoops. He got it, RC. He did. Yeah, that was a nice move by Cameron. Just had more momentum, and Deegan got stuck in that, that rut as he makes a mistake, kind of stalled the motorcycle, it. but still, nice recovery by him. He just unfortunately lost one position, but Cameron McAdoo, the way he left, led that down, he raced the win. Nice start to main event. Deegan has had his troubles early after briefly getting the number one spot. He's battling it out with 
Hymas. Deacon on the left side. And Pierce Brown in this fight as well. This is fourth, fifth, sixth. Yeah, I felt like coming in, in this, uh, this race, Oh, as Hayden comes up really short on that triple, and it kind of goes back to the point where I think these guys are getting caught off guard. Once they let off of the gas, the, the being sucked down, the bike is slowing down because of the, the um, conditions. You know, one thing I want to mention about Max and Steve, and James, you've talked about it quite a bit, and, and, and you know, the red... Vial! Vial's taking the lead. Sorry, RC, off the racetrack was McAdoo, and now Tom Vial, who has never won a Supercross, has the number one spot. Uh, Every the lane strikes again. Well, it, it strikes again, and James, you know, I mean, th this track is going to get gnarly as this race goes on. The lines are going to change continuously. The ruts are going to get much, much deeper. So the difficulty of keeping a straight line and doing it, everything properly is going to be so hard to do. Replay. Yeah, it looks like oh. he, he makes a quad and, and just kind of gets a little bit off, and sure enough, just makes a mistake. and. Yeah, um, Tom gets through that rhythm section. But as I was saying, one mistake in this with the, how soft this dirt is, you just lose a lot of time. And Deegan yeah. moving back up as we go from Anstey to him. He's catching Hamaker. This would be for podium real estate. So I was going to ask you, Ricky, okay, yeah. maybe the wind's not in play for oh. Deegan. Oh, now he's got problems. What a what? save. Unbelievable. Freestyle, Brian Deegan all yes. day long. <laughs> yeah, 360. What a save, yeah. yeah. This is something, this, this, this is unteachable. You can't teach this kind of agility and what he did there. Time well, to make the donuts. Yeah, well, maybe in that house they do, because Brian does do some 360s and backflips, so maybe it is te teachable. <laughs> wow. But yeah, that's when you go back to, I'd rather be lucky than good. So Vial, who was a victim like McAdoo and Hammaker and Deegan of a big first turn crash, now coming back with a podium and maybe a win tonight. He's in contention. Deegan is still under pressure from Brown. As we watch this battle here, there is Vial. And maybe with all the talk about Fortner and Deegan, McAdoo, who's been in title contention for years, maybe there has not been enough talk about what would we get out of Tom Vial in his second season moving to America and racing Supercross. He has clearly gone to another level this year. These guys are tough. These guys are tough. Every single rider in 250 East already in just three races has a story to tell. Look at this battle just raging between Small and Anstey with valuable points on the line. And meanwhile, the checkered flag is going to fly for the first time ever. Tom Vial is a winner in Monster Energy Supercross. And McAdoo is going to hold off his teammate Habaker to the line. But if you're on the podium in this class, you are a title contender over the bridge. There's two turns to go. Now he's going to be on the inside on this split lane. He's going to run it as hard as he can. Try up around the outside. Let's see if Swole can hold it. He does. Yeah. Whoa, oh. hold on to it, Max. Yeah. Uh, Jalik played a little chicken rat there. He started did. cutting over he like. Oh, had the cover over the tire fresh tire. Cover off. Oh. It's still on there. Revs are up. They just got it free. We're underway. And it still gets a decent start. But down to the inside is Tomac, side by side with Lawrence. Lawrence almost ran into Chase Sexton. Sexton in the number one spot. Talk about a plot twist, James, and having angst before the line. That is worst case scenario. Yeah, but Jet Lawrence to be able to recover and focus. Right. Um, we saw that happen in outdoors, but man, that was a great start, but even better start by Chase Sexton and Eli Tomac. Here we go. So big hitters up front. It's Ferrandez and Lawrence. Third and fourth, but Chase Sexton, is he back? Maybe not quite 100%, but is it enough to win at Daytona? But he's got the all-time best at this track. Eli Tomac putting the pressure on. And considering where these guys were last year, these were the two guys um, fighting for this championship and now having Jet Lawrence in third place. This race is set up to go well. And Chase Sexton has some speed, Ricky, in that heat race. He was coming up before that little fall, so well, let's see what he can do up front. And then he cleared that big tunnel jump and then a mistake by Lawrence allows Roxon to get right there. Lawrence able to hold Roxon off. So, so much talent up front. Yeah, I think things are starting to happen a little quick for Jet and you got to believe that start and what was going on with the tire probably didn't help that. So, I'll uh -oh. tell you, Tomac is starting to close on the leader Sexton and Sexton bounced off a jump, feet off the pegs. Tomac was under fire from Lawrence. Now we have all three in the same shot as the battle we wanted in that rhythm lane, working for Lawrence. He's alongside Tomac. 
And he has to pass me. There you go. I think Eli was obviously he didn't think Jet was that close, and Jet was a little bit back, got a, uh, a good run through that rhythm section, and made his way up. Eli oh, didn't see that. Oh, around Sexton. They got a Bogo special going on. Two That's right. Over two here. first. Yeah. Again, it was a perfect. He caught them all, both of them um, off guard. And James, you know what this means right here. He's going to have clean air, no dirt in front of him. He's, he's going to have great vision. These guys are going to have to react right here. Yeah, and Eli Tomac, that bike is smoking um, yeah. this early in the race. Well, we're halfway. That's kind of not good for to see that, actually. Oh, no, there's a hose. JT, what you got? Well, you know, Eli Tomac over the years has been a rider that uses the clutch a lot. And when he gets into these situations where he's desperately trying to chase down Jet Lawrence, I think he's reverting back to that. You can hear him really accelerating on the downside as he jumps. And that's just overheating that Yamaha. Well, you, I wonder if maybe it's so hard to speculate and guess. I wonder if it's not the engine. Is it is, is there's an issue with the shock? Is the shock leak leaking and getting on the exhaust pipe or the header pipe? Well, it's hard to expect. Yeah. yeah, I mean, whatever it looks like, it definitely looks like it's hindering him because even traction-wise, that bike looks like it's starting to be held up on him, like a little bit dead in the rear. And yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's a clutch with that smoke. Because as that bike is getting g'd out and it's getting compressed, it comes out quite a bit. We hear the crowd that was Plessinger behind him. Yes, Plessinger oh, no. has gone down from fifth, and that is going to be costly. He has been in this championship fight. Got a All hustle. season long. Got yep. a hustle right here. Every point counts. Oh, and he's got to pick it up that's uphill. A, yeah, that's the worst position to be in when you're trying to pick the bike up the opposite way. Yeah, looks like that, that rhythm section where we saw Jet Lawrence probably got off and then we got come up short. Ooh, oh, jumps through the, what do you think is foot pegs maybe? Drug up the face. Yeah, I think he's probably forward. just the softness of the dirt. We've seen the rotation. But let's be honest, this is a statement type ride from Lawrence to make the move on Tomac and Sexton to get the lead. And now he's a half a lap away from his first ever 450 win at Daytona. He'd be the first three time winner in this championship this year. Definitely a dominant, dominant ride by Jed. A smart ride, especially how the last weekend went. And we've been talking about mistakes. Um, on a track that everyone's making mistakes. It's nice to see this kid, and he knows, Ricky, what this means. They threw everything they had at him on a track that others have been so successful on, and he has conquered them. And Jet Lawrence wins Daytona! Big win right there. Big win. Yeah, this is, this is huge. This is huge. This point of the season, we're past halfway in an incredible ride. Redemption from last week. They're going for the goggles, like it or not. <laughs> this is going to be a we got another battle. Match. <laughs> another this battle be a on the speedway. <laughs> this race ain't over. There was a lot of talk this week about Lawrence, but he has answered it fighting.